And once you get into it, it's hard to get out. During the spring, it's the smell of the first turned dirt. And during the fall, it's the smell of peanuts getting harvested. I like tilling the soil, plant crops. I love to plant crops. I love to see it grow. I love to work with cows. I, I, I just, you know, I just love what I do. And, and I'd rather be in no place than out on a farm. Well, I'm actually a third generation farmer. My grandfather actually farmed and also my dad. My dad was a sharecropper. Yeah, I grew up in a house where my dad farmed and my granddad before him farmed. I come from a history of farming. A real farmer, you know, it has to be in your DNA. And I know it's in my DNA because I'm still in it. Historically, it's always been difficult. In 1910, there were 218,000 black farmers owning roughly 15 million acres of land. By the year 1992, there were only 18,000 black farmers owning a little over 2 million acres of land, uh, almost a 90% decrease in both. That shows a clear pattern of discrimination and a number of other things that have disadvantaged black farmers over a period of time and has led to loss of land and almost a class of landless people. In 2018, I, I uh, went to sell a, a tractor and a peanut picker. And when I get there, they have all the equipment lined up, you know, and, and my equipment is toward the back of the cell. They number all the equipment. My tractor has KKK1 on the window of the tractor and KKK2 on my peanut picker. And I couldn't, couldn't sell my equipment um, during that time. And I had to refinance my land due to that because I wasn't able to get the assistance that I needed from the government or even just from selling my stuff right out. It's a, it's a bad way to feel. Like, man, this is the greatest country in the world. And you do all these things, but you've never been accepted and never will be. When we start talking about the major issues of black farming, and when you boil it down to the major three, the lack of access to credit, discrimination, and an issue of heirs' property, what we're talking about simply is a lack of access to resources, to government resources, and that's a major civil rights issue. To be a black farmer in America and to go into one of USDA's offices, local office, is like you don't even exist as a black person. And we are treated like second class citizens. It took me two and a half years to actually get that loan. Had I been a farmer in jeopardy of losing my farm, the bank would have foreclosed on me in two and a half years. The Pickford lawsuit, the black farmer lawsuit that happened back in 1999. Farmers were reporting to USDA that then when they were going into their local FSA office, they were either outright being denied for loans or they were being given the proceeds of their loan so late in the season, maybe months after the season should have started, that there was just no way they were ever going to be able to grow enough to sell to pay off those loans. And to the point where many of them lost their farm, lost their land, lost their livelihoods. And so this lawsuit showed that USDA was implicit in terms of this discrimination over a pattern of decades, if not a century. I would not advise any a uh, beginning black farmer to apply for loans from FSA. Compound interest, you're never gonna catch up. And that's my problem now. I haven't borrowed any money from FSA in 10, 12 years, but I'm still paying, you know. It's difficult as best trying to survive on the income that, that the farmer gets anyway. And then that the first of that money goes to FSA from a, a debt that's way back, you know. And that was one of the reasons I was so glad to hear about the debt relief, you know. There was something called the American Rescue Plan, Section 1005, which provided $4 billion of debt relief to farmers of color, including black farmers. So when Section 1005 of the American Rescue Plan was passed, we were getting the word out to our members and they were very excited that the government, Congress, was really taking seriously the plight of the black farmers and the reality that under the previous administration, the vast majority of COVID relief and farm subsidies were going to the white farmers. We had been told and promised that as of the end of July that we would be paid or our debt would be forgiven plus the 20%. We have made plans on that with our families and our farming future. A lot of us have been buying different equipment and, and making improvements on our farms, hoping 
that this was actually going to get implemented as it said it was and it was signed into law and we were banking on that. We were. And when they come out with this debt relief, I was naive enough to think that it was going to happen. <laughs> and guess what? They just took my money for another payment. <laughs> you know, if Congress passed it, President signed it, then how can a set number of peoples, white particularly, come in and stop the whole show, just shut it down? It's just, it just unbelievable. I did what any other person would do who thought that all their debts would be paid. You know, I made plans. <laughs> I made real plans. My family, my kids, my wife, my dad, my everybody are part of those plans, are part of my plans, and I made those plans, and I hope I get to com uh, keep those commitments that I made to the people that I love. That's it. If we don't get it, a lot of farmers that we do have in farming now won't be farming. We really need this. Our lives are at stake right now. They have been. The government needs to stand beside the law. When you've jumped in ditches at night at 13, 14 years old, because they, the local boys are having fun, they're looking for somebody to have fun with. When you've gone through those kind of things, you expect very little. So I don't expect anything. We used to, but hey, man, we always dream of better things, you know? Yeah. We've been kicked aside long enough, and it's time to stand up and fight. We've been treated real bad, you know, all through the years. Not only me as a farmer, but older farmers that actually done, done passed on was treated unfairly. And I think we deserve it. And I think, I, and I think we should get it. And it's about time that we realize how important farming is to our country to our environment, to our economy, and how black farmers are an important part of that equation as well.